Hi, I'm Cressel Anderson, this is Maker Size. In this episode, I build a cart for my Gingri lathe and I'm really impressed with how much the concrete top improves the lathe's cut quality. When I first talked about the lathe cart, I was planning on adding drawers. I delayed that based on the cost of the drawer slides. Also, when I went to pick up the square tube, two and a half inch square tube must be special order. I didn't want to wait, so I bought two inch square tube. Then when I got back, I just updated the parametric dimensions of the design and it updated accordingly. It's really slick. I started out by cutting two inch by two inch by one eighth inch square tubing to the required length. I used the first piece that I cut as the gauge to mark the remainder. Then I cleaned them up and assembled them into a form. However, the angles that I had cut were not 45 degrees. This is something I highly recommend is to check those angles before you duplicate them. This cost me about two and a half hours of extra work to grind down those corners. And uh, it really wouldn't have been necessary had I checked those angles before I made all the cuts with my chop saw. Because the square tube doesn't have any nice places to clamp my ground for my welder, I just tack on a little piece of scrap for me to clamp the ground of the welder onto. Initially I just tack the square tube into place and then I go back and uh, complete the full welds around the perimeter of the top and bottom of the frames. Then I grind those welds down. After that I tack into place the upright columns for the frame to one side and after that's completed I tack it on to the top and I did have to kind of monkey with those and kind of hammer one of them out because the tacks weren't quite right. After I tacked it in I finished up all the welds Then I welded on the casters to the base. And then I checked it out just to see how, you know, stable it was going to be. I welded on tabs for mounting both the concrete slab to the top of the cart as well as mounting the wooden panels on the sides and bottom of the cart. After I cleaned up those welds, I cut a melamine sheet, four by eight sheet down to size to make the forms for casting the concrete. I used some silicone caulk to fill in the ends of coupling nuts that would be embedded into the concrete to provide a secure mounting between the concrete slab and the lathe cart, as well as to provide mounting for the lathe motor assembly, and uh, I did not include one for the shaper. I used the 3D model directly on my iPad to allow me to measure these things, and that works really great in the shop. However, I did forget to mirror those things. You can see that they're laid out in the same orientation as the lathe and the motor assembly. However, that uh, you're looking at the interior of what will become the concrete block. So they're essentially mirrored. Those holes should have been uh, flipped uh, along the wide axis of the concrete block. I ground little grooves into the coupling nuts to help the concrete kind of grab onto them. And that seemed to work out pretty well. Then I caulked around the seams of the form as well as the base of the coupling nuts. I cut some rebar to length and 
use some small gauge wire to uh, kind of secure that rebar together. I cut the top to the dimensions of the block, but I didn't realize that my slots uh, weren't cut quite far enough in my outfeed table, so I had to kind of figure out what was going on there and then go grab a handsaw to finish out that cut. You need to mark those like one, two, three, and four, or? Uh, you know, that's a pretty good idea. I match drilled holes into the melamine and the tabs on the cart. However, in another instance of a mirroring error, I, uh, I again drilled those holes kind of from the wrong side. The side that I am drilling is actually the side that will end up inside the concrete block. So that was the side that I should have put these nuts into, not uh, the side with the markings on it. The side with the markings kind of goes down onto the lathe cart. So I had to kind of fix that later on in the video. I mixed up sand topping mix for the lathe cart top. Well, that uh, probably means I need a new bucket. Whoa. Definitely need a new bucket. Did you um, compare the square footage of the mortar to your square footage of your application? Look like, it looked like the uh, I guess cubic feet. online they said 0.6 cubic feet per uh, 0.6 pounds per cubic feet. No. What did they say? What they said was 0.6 cubic feet per bag. When you consider that I use the 60 pound bag of sand topping mix instead of the 80 pound bag of concrete mix, the density should have come to 120 pounds per cubic foot. That works out to 1,922 kilograms per cubic meter. If I had specified the proper density in the software for the mix that I'd be using, I could have saved myself a stressful run to the home center to pick up an extra bag. For sure one bag, that's for sure. Yeah. Fortunately, my dad was on hand to help keep the concrete moist while I went and fetched that bag. I really should have double checked those numbers. Uh, I can't blame the software. It really was a engineering error there using the wrong density of concrete. I mean, that's the kind of thing, that's the way engineers kill astronauts right there. Kind of embarrassing should line up pretty much with the edges. Right, I'm gonna take the old sanded pad off. I used a palm sander to try to vibrate out some of the bubbles. It worked out okay, but I really didn't use it long enough for it to make much of a difference. In preparation for painting, I used acetone to try to get rid of some of the grease, oil, and grime on the surface of the frame. To handle the cast concrete top and mount it onto the frame of the lathe cart, I drilled the floor joists that are above the garage so that I could mount hooks in them. And then I hung my winch from those hooks. I used the winch and a strap to help me move the lathe cart. I didn't like trying to pull it, so I did end up using my truck just to drag it farther, kind of closer to the middle of the garage. And then I use the winch to lift it vertically. I was pretty apprehensive about uh, the amount of energy stored in that concrete block, so I tried to give it a pretty wide berth. Lots of energy.
After I had the top up on the sawhorses, I started unboxing the top. I unscrewed the screws that were holding the coupling nuts into the frame, and then I went around and removed the side pieces. Got my first glimpse at what the concrete slab would look like. If you follow me on Instagram, you saw some of the pictures that I took uh, during that unboxing. I slid the concrete slab over to the edge so that that way I could get the strap around the bottom of the concrete top. I needed to flip it over so I used the winch to help. That was super dicey. Whew. Oh man. <laughs> After I had the top flipped over, I hoisted it up and pushed the lathe cart frame underneath it. Like I said earlier, the bolt holes that I had drilled, match drilled into the form, they weren't aligned with the frame because they were mirrored. So I made some markings to help me know which direction those holes needed to move. Initially I was going to use my Dremel tool to kind of enlarge those holes in the right direction, but I decided it would be faster to use a unibit to just enlarge those holes, and uh, that worked out fine. I used some wooden blocks and shims to help me get the strap out. I had to drill some holes in the top, and I tried to epoxy in some coupling nuts. Like I said earlier, I mirrored the coupling nuts for the motor mount, so they were on the wrong side of the table. I cut plywood to make the sides and the bottom of the lathe cart. Then I drilled and countersunk holes in the mounting tabs so that I could mount those plywood panels in the frame. I put a few coats of water-based poly onto the plywood panels and then I mounted them in the lathe cart with some wood screws. Then it was time for the moment of truth. I unscrewed the lathe from my old workbench and I moved it over to the new lathe cart. I made markings on the feet of the lathe so that way I would know uh, about where to drill the holes for mounting the lathe. Fortunately, the base of the lathe is symmetric so those holes, although they were mirrored, didn't end up having an impact. The coupling nuts that are embedded in the concrete were on the opposite side from the new ones that are epoxied in. I snugged up the mounting bolts and had a look at it in its new home. I used a paper template to transfer the location of the holes to a piece of plywood. The idea here is that I could mount the old motor mount to this piece of plywood temporarily until I come up with a new motor mount. I want to have one that I can use for both the shaper and the lathe. That's not good. Unfortunately, when I really torque down the mounting bolts, it extracts the coupling nuts from the epoxy. If you have a better idea about what type of epoxy I should be using, let me know in the comments or through social media. I felt like the bolts would hold okay if I didn't torque them down too tightly, so I decided to go ahead and test it. <laughs> that 
a little better. Let's go straight for broke. Well, now I gotta cut something. The concrete top on this lathe cart seems to make cutting much nicer, I guess due to the stability. I'm super happy that we met the Patreon goal to start the shaper. I picked up some transmissions that I'm going to melt down and use in making the shaper. I don't know if you realize it, but up until this point, I've really only been able to cut using the two slowest speeds on the step pulleys. After upgrading to this cart, I can cut full speed, maximum speed, and I can cut that max speed on steel, which is really impressive to me. I like the stability that's afforded by the concrete top. I feel like it's not only going to improve the cut quality, but it'll also improve camera shots by making the lathe more stable. This project has about 38 hours of build time, and it costs about $260. If you'd like plans for this project, I haven't put together anything yet, but let me know in the comments through social media or email, and if that's something you're interested in, I could try to put something together. I hope this video inspires you to exercise your inner maker. For those of you supporting me on Patreon, I really appreciate it. Consider subscribing to this channel, but definitely check out some of our other videos. Thanks for watching.